Alright guys, welcome to Mordor Rise to War. This is going to be my first video. I probably won't do a whole lot of videos on this one, but I've been this game is brand new. I've been playing on this server uh, since day one. Um, I was not lucky enough to get to the beta, but I've learned a lot, I think, and I see a lot of people doing things... I would say wrong with their armies, or not understanding certain concepts, and maybe some people just want some tips. Now, this is going to be exclusively from the evil faction side, so for the good factions, hopefully some of this stuff will carry through, but we're going to talk about commanders, making proper armies, and I'm going to attempt, for the first time, I believe, on this whole server, to take a 300 uh, power, or tier 13 land. Um, now, I just took a tier 12 land earlier today, a lair, but with the help of two other people in my faction. So, I would have no idea if I will successfully take this or if I will fail. You'll get to see it with me. But before I do, I'm going to go over some army combinations and how the armies work in this game. Uh, so, let's start off with that, what I got going on here. So, my primary army right here is... Ugthok. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably going to butcher a lot of this. I apologize. But, uh, and he's just, uh, he's actually a secondary army, but he's gotten so many kills. He leveled up faster than anyone else. It is just ridiculous. Uh, and when you build an army, you want to build it specifically for a job or to counter something, you know, and you want the commander to emphasize that. You want to build off of the commander's strengths, and you can kind of see some of my armies here. Most of them are nothing special at the moment, and some of them are incomplete, like with my, uh, this guy right here, I've just got horsemen. I do want pikemen, but I just haven't unlocked them yet. You know, there's a lot going on. Um, but my Ugthok here... Uh, he was just the first commander I got, and once I unlocked Berserkers, uh, I used him to follow up on my armies. So whenever your armies attack at the same time they merge, the first army will tank for the secondary army. So if I have an army tanking for Ugthok, his guys do a lot of damage at the beginning of their rounds, but the longer they fight, the weaker they get. If they come in, if you are a supportive army, you're not fighting during all the rounds. You're just getting only your offense as a percentage support and only during certain rounds. So these guys are actually some of the best supports in the game because since they're not technically fighting as long, they keep their bonuses throughout more of the fight. So they're quite good, but also... If your tank army fails, they fight again, it starts the fight again from scratch, which means to get those bonuses again. So these guys could do massive damage as a support, and then massive damage, and usually, if you're fighting multiple armies, if they finish off that first army that they've now got to hit twice, they can now get their bonuses a third time against the second army. And at that point, that's when they normally take a lot of losses, but I've had this guy walk away with, uh, you know, an easy 60 thousand experience uh before at level 40 and this is how i've gotten him to 45 so quickly um that and a few mock battles you know mock battles i've also been spreading out my mock battles pretty evenly with most of these guys that are in the 30s and up but um now the hero here he's all about orakai so that's why pure orakai army single unit type he's focused on one job um here, this is my Camille, and he has a lot of focus and bonuses to poison and fire, so I've got him with archers that have poison, and they use focus damage and physical damage, which works with Camille, and then I've got some frontline guys uh, that do fire damage, so they're all getting those offensive bonuses from him, and they're still using his physical, not just the focus. It allows them to be a little bit more tanky with all the focus as well, even though they're they're, it's not a tanky army. But this army right here has so much siege capability, it is ridiculous. If I jump into it here, uh, you can see I have 132k base siege power with this army. Um, and I've not upgraded that yet at all. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I could still do with that. Um, but that is essentially my sieging army. He comes in after I've killed the armies and helps capture the, the places or the buildings. Uh, anyway, uh, now... One thing in this game to note that a lot of people get wrong, they think that the melee units guard the archers. This is not true. Let me say that again. 
This is not true. Your opponent units will target whatever they're primarily good against. Um, so now some heroes will say stuff like target people with the highest defense, in which case if your swordsmen, which usually have higher defense, or you know, they're going to get targeted first. But it's not because they're in the front row or because they're swordsmen. Um, so having an army that's like half swordsmen, half archers is not necessarily – the best way to go unless your opponent is not built to fight against it or if he's built specifically to focus on big people then it works otherwise it actually fails to work the way you think it will 90 percent of the time well maybe not 90 probably more like 70 80 percent but yeah and i'm not saying you shouldn't combine you know frontline and backline people it's just important to realize you need something actually in front to somehow make your opponent attack you otherwise it's not working out that way uh in which case you want to build your army again for a focus or for a counter. And this army likes it's very, you know, elemental based. So it can still do some pretty decent damage. Um, moving down from there, this is an, actually probably my second strongest army. I've got a Lurtz army. Lurtz again, bow guy, very Orakai based. I essentially was going originally all, uh, of his bowmen with him, and they're very anti-archer, so if I see someone with a bunch of archers, you know, I bring out this guy, all of his archers are dead. The problem is that they, uh, they, again, there are, they, they don't have a whole lot of tanking capabilities. Now, with Lurtz, they can tank a little bit against melee attacks, and also, they heal themselves as they do damage. So by throwing in a couple of the slow cave trolls, I could take that first turn damage, maybe lose a few archers. Then the cave trolls will absorb all of the damage until they're dead. Uh, or not cave trolls, but the ravagers, because they taunt, essentially. Um, which gives my any you know surviving bowmen the chance to heal up. And by the time my ravagers are dead... I've killed all of his archers, so the only thing he has left is melee, so now with uh, Lurtz doing, getting – and those types of archers receiving reduced damage against melee, they will actually survive a little bit longer and be able to do more of their damage, uh, even though they're not doing as much as they would against said archers. So this might not win every battle by itself, but it's surely going to bring anything of equal power down to virtually nothing, and even if it's fighting something that – massively outpowers it like a level 42 hero which i have fought on the server with him uh it's gonna wipe out all of his archers and that's important because once i've taken out your archers my uh, you know once i have like a fail beast army or something that might be weak against archers they come in and take out the rest with minimal losses or you know maybe follow up with this guy <laughs> you know he, oh look that i've got survivors and i'm already killing your second army uh this army is just a, an orc army again because this guy, I'd like buffing the orc guy, he's buffing orcs. So, you know, I've got the archers, got the front guys to break defenses. So if you use a lot of people that are tanky and highly defensive, a lot of those melee units, this guy comes in and breaks them down. Um, honestly, this guy was initially going to be my gatherer, but, you know, he's turned out to be, he's leveled up nice and become a decent fighting force. Uh, Agzok, or however you pronounce this, he is very, very good as an early game uh, hero. Um, he does massive damage himself, like more than e any tier 1 or tier 2 hero that I've seen. I mean, potentially there might be some tier 2s that could do more damage, and even Lurts potentially against certain adversaries, but this guy just does really good hero damage. So the longer the battle goes, the more he can take advantage of that. So throwing him with a tanky army, very, very good. Allows him to just be that much better. Um, and these Ravagers are very tanky. Uh, the other thing about him, he has an ability that makes your opponent, all of their units, take a little bit more damage when they receive damage. It's not a lot, but it's very useful with the Ravagers because the Ravagers hit everything. So now it's a little bit of damage, not on just what you're hitting, but on every, but it's multiplied by the number of people he has. So the more opponents you're fighting, the more his bonus stacks with the Ravagers. Uh, so you're doing massive damage to everything with those Ravagers now. And a huge... Let me rephrase that. Not massive damage. You're doing a large total amount of damage increase. Um, something super tanky with a big healing guy might counter this quite well, 
but practically anything else, this could tear apart pretty good if he doesn't have a really good counter for the Ravengers. Um, like I said, this guy, uh, I, I would initially build him with pikemen to counter cavalry, or these cavalry that I've got on him, which counter archers. Uh, a mixture would be good, but I haven't unlocked the pikemen yet. I kind of skipped them and come back around. Uh, this is just honestly a garbage unit for me. I've threw, thrown on uh, my riders, which counter other cavalry. Um, and uh, I'm not really using the other heroes at this time for anything. I'm just, you know, they're low levels. I've unlocked them later on, and uh, I was focusing more on a, just getting a few up. Um, so I've thrown scouts on these guys, and I throw them at the enemy, see what the enemy's got, then I run my counters, uh, saving my units. But that's just some of my ideas, and there's others that you can do. But hopefully this gives you some thought process, you know. Uh, and also knowing, like I said, which army to attack with first. You know, uh, if I attack with a, you know, tanky army, that's great. I can come in with, like, maybe an archer army to support it, or, you know, and then, or come in with uh, an army to do massive damage, finish something off, and hit the other guy second. And then, you know, he's going to become the tank next if he was the supporting army. It's because your tank's going to get wiped out, your supporting army becomes the attacker, becomes the new tank. So then, who's going to be your next army? It's kind of good to roll with them that way. But let's go ahead and do this little test fight and show you what I mean. So, and I've got no idea what's going to coming here. I'm, honestly, I half expect to lose everything. I do have some units in reserve to try to replace, though. I'm, I'm hoping to win. Hoping. First attempt here. Um, let's send in this guy to scout because it's oops, because he's got slow units. It's terrifying. Yes. Let's see what you got. And obviously he's not going to kill anything, but I'll be able to see what he has, and then counter it. Oops. While well, I'm waiting on that. Got some buffs going here. Yeah. Come on, Ugluk. I believe in you. Which is a total lie, because I believe you're going to die. Now, during that five seconds where it says at war, if you had attacked with another army and they hit at the exact same time, that's when one would become the tank and the other one would be the support. If you get a draw, you get a full five minutes, though. Okay, so the first army we are fighting is these guys. They are cavalry units. They are resistant cavalry units that protects allies for the first few rounds. He's got no other allies. So, obviously, stuff that's good against cavalry. All right. So that'll be pretty easy to counter, just countering cavalry. So let's march in. And let's go in with... Actually, these guys would be a good support. So for the first army, what's their timing on that? Their timing is 25 seconds. Let's break their defense with this dude then. His timing is a minute, two seconds, so we'll go with that. Yes. So I want to make sure that my other army combines with that. March. And what is this army I wonder? It's 27 seconds. Yeah, so it's only going to be the two. All right, so I'm about four seconds behind. There we go. Perfect. Almost missed it. Let's see how this goes. And honestly, I, I don't expect these guys to win because the first guy was it was terrifying. But I should do good damage with the support army behind him, and then the support army should attack, which should do another decent amount of damage, and that should weaken them enough that I could wipe them out with the next one. Actually, I went into a draw. All right, let's see how that went. Yeah, five minutes now. 
Let's see. So this guy hit, and he lost most of his forces. Tanking did very little damage to Bormir. This guy hit. Oh, he got completely wiped out. Wow, that was... Whew, that was not good. All right. So, this is actually looking really bad. Let me send in... You're not going to be good against them. Let me send in this guy first. Then march behind him. With my... Beasts. And march behind them. I'm not worried about time because I got that full five minute timer now, so they'll just be supporting that guy or replacing him as they go. Uh, I don't want to march with archers yet. Let's wait because. Well, no. I guess after everything else is done, even if I'm on a second army, that's all I've got left. So. I don't know if he's got archers. I... No. I guess actually my riders would go next because. It wouldn't take too much damage from archers, and then I could wipe out any archers. So I can focus on anything else. Alright, let's see how this goes. Oof. He went down to half, and he didn't kill very much at all. Yikes. That's scary. Alright, march. Definitely send you in now. And I'm holding off, if you noticed, on this army with Camille, just because he's more of a siege army. And I would normally... Oh, well, I don't need to really siege this thing, so now that I think about it, I should go ahead and send him in. He wouldn't do good against that first army for sure, but... So I don't even know what the second army is yet. Let's see what I can do. He's just slowly getting weaker. Oh, looks like we finally killed him. The trolls did it. Alright. So they wiped him out with minimum losses, actually, from half health. Because I guess he was still being supported by several armies. Alright. So I, I thought he only supported two at a time. I could be wrong about that. Still need, got a lot to learn. Then he went to hit the second army. He lost most of his guys. The second army is very resistant unit effective against melee enemies. So that was probably a... Yeah, he was a good counter for me. But... I've got a lot more going in. Let me try... Recalling that army instead of waiting now. Because they've done their bit. Well, it's 32nd March. Good. Recall. And recall. And the reason I'm recalling all this is because otherwise they're going to fight to the death from where they're currently at, which is not what I want them to do. I'm hoping I can recall them, refill them, and have them fight at full force instead of uh, partial force. And... That should increase the damage I'm doing and reduce what I'm doing. Oof. Yeah. Lurts got completely owned on that one. And you did too. Wow. This guy is going down slowly. But we got him down to 2,800 of those troops. So, let's see what we can reinforce and if we can take this thing. And I've got a lot of these guys in reserve, so... I'll take a minute to get down. And how much time do I have on this thing? I've got eight minutes left. Good. So I can still do this. Let's see if I can replace any of you guys. Two minutes to get down there. Replace any of you guys. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. <laughs> of course, all the people in red have been killed, but they'll be back. What's my treatment looking like? Yikes. 
All right, might as well get started on that. That's going to take 12 hours. Jeez, this is a lot for this land. <laughs> like I said, I expected to potentially lose this. I, I think I've got it won, honestly, but it's... Whew! Taking everything I've got. On the bright side, after actually taking a level 300 power land, I should be able to get a lot of... Uh, good resources and mock battles from it. Iron's one of the things that I use a lot of with these forces. So I'll be able to focus on food, and I'll be able to use my mock battles to get a lot more. You're still terrifying. Wait. Did I not get the trolls coming? Let's see here. Thought I sent them in. Come on. All right. Let's go ahead. Forty one seconds. I still got six minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Definitely like my Org Thok to be a, a secondary fighter. So let's send these guys in. Yeah, send him when he's too powerful. He's a minute and something seconds. All right, march him. Fifty, forty. So when this goes to forty six or five, forty five. No wait. I want to go behind him, so I'll wait till he gets past 41. 41, 40, all right, now march. Okay. When he lands, I can have this horseman coming behind him. As a little support, even if he's not very strong. Anything that reduces my losses. Now more. Rorkthok joins. Alright, let's see how this went. So, you go. Looks like I captured it. So, you hit. Got about 30,000. You came in. And got the victory with another 30,000. And that's the land. Let's check one thing, just out of curiosity. How much would I get for a mock battle? 50,000 plus 3,500 bonus, so I'd be getting 53,500 per mock battle. Ooh, that's going to help me level up my other heroes fast. I'll be able to get those 30s to 40s in a, a day or two. Anyway, that's the video, guys. Hope you like it. Hope some of this helps uh, with the game. And the building of your heroes and commanders, you know, learning what they're good against and uh, what works with them, making them the proper armies. Because, I mean, some of them, like I said, some will get bonuses for stuff. You know, like, this guy has no bonus for any type, you know, uh, that I can remember off the top of my head, so he was good for cavalry. Uh, this guy had no bonus for type, but his stuff worked with the Ravengers. You know, orc bonuses, orakai bonuses, orakai bonuses, lots of... Uh, this guy's the most well balanced, I think, in the game, but or at least for the dark side. But he still has a lot of bonuses for essentially elemental damage, like po poison and um, fire. And he's got more focus, so I mean, he's just so good to figure out what they're good at and focus at them. Like this is Evilman. Obviously, you're gonna have other heroes you'll unlock besides these that I mentioned, but you can figure it out just by looking at their skills. Um, just throwing together whatever you want is, is not the best way to go. Try to figure out, oh, this is what he has. I'm going to counter it. Oh, this doesn't counter that. I'm going to save these units. Maybe they'll counter another army, you know, uh, and do what you can. Anyway, 
Thanks, guys. Sorry this was such a long video, but hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos from Lord of the Rings Rise of War or Rise to War, uh, send me a message. Uh, I am currently on server, I believe it's 22. Uh, I'm in Mordor in uh, the Warband, uh, the Army of Mordor, L-O-T-R. Um, we're always looking for new members. Feel free to join us and have yourselves a great night.